I'd like to start today by, by thanking some other people involved. And I've got uh, Ludovic's name highlighted in uh, a bolder font there because uh, just to emphasize how important his contributions are, especially to some of the, the potential accessibility portions of this software package I'm about to show you. Uh, David Goodsell for being the inspiration for most of this work, as well as uh, being involved in the development, and of course, Art Olson's lab for helping us to create an environment where, where a project like this could flourish during my, my thesis, and that I've now extended at UCSF. Uh, I, so I've, I've modified my talk a great deal as well, having seen some of the conversations that occurred yesterday, and uh, also based on, on um, Phil's proposal this morning, I propose that we can use CellPack to generate molecular models of cells and cell scale volumes. And as Herbert mentioned, um, the, the approach to this is kind of to build the models and fill in the gaps, or to build the models uh, at, the, at the resolution and confidence that we have and uh, provide portals for the community to iteratively improve the models. We can assemble and synthesize multi-scale data we can build whole cells using this software in molecular detail. And I propose we can use this as a starting point for simulation, such as Brownian dynamics, or as an engine for agent-based global simulations um, that can be validated with the, the framework that I'm going to show you and can provide probability maps for driving some larger global simulations. So there's a question yesterday, why, why do we want to do this in the first place? And uh, Phil also asked us to focus on these, what we see as the grand challenges in whole cell modeling. And I've been particularly interested in being able to see what we, we coin as the mesoscale, this realm in between what we can see with uh, you know, traditional light mic mic microscopy, the kind of uh, detail you see in, in high school labs and the kind of structural detail we resolve with techniques like crystallography, uh, NMR, et cetera. And Mark uh, will show you probably this afternoon that there are a vast array of technologies that are really helping us to directly observe the mesoscale. Uh, techniques like storm ultra-resolution light microscopy and, of course, tomography of, from various systems. But, um, even as those systems improve and we can see more directly, we'll still have a need, I believe, to frame that type of information and to parameterize it to be able to build and drive computational models so that we can do more effective computational experiments in the long run. So in a nutshell, uh, Art showed this image yesterday, this painting that David Goodsell did, I believe, in 1998. And using the technologies at the time, uh, it took Art, as he said, about a month to position these objects into space to build this 75 nanometer portion of the relatively sparsely populated blood serum in the model. And essentially, this is a packing problem, similar to the game Tetris, where you have to position objects in space. And in our case, we have to do it in a biologically relevant manner. So, the easiest way to show you this or is to encourage you to go to the website to see the details of the packing algorithm if you're curious it's an open source project or to encourage you to download it and start to play with it. But here I'm doing a very simple fill because it's easier to explain the process of just uh, positioning spheres into a 2D surface and there are some of the spheres have a, a probability for their distribution so the purple spheres have a, a Gaussian falloff probability uh, in, towards the top center, and the red spheres have a very broad Gaussian probability along the, the negative, positive and negative axes. And I'm just changing the random seed at the bottom so that you can see that you can fill in relatively high speed if you turn off the, the real-time visualization tools, and you have easy parameter access. So to build the types of models that David showed in his paintings yesterday, you can imagine there are incredibly complex packing algorithms that have to interoperate to, to get fibrous elements to work with globular elements to work with uh, transmembrane protein elements. And so we can see very easily that there are biases occurring in some of these uh, 
when different parameters are applied to the packing algorithm in these 2D fills, but we need to be able to visualize that. So we have analysis tools built into the system that can allow us to graph to see edge effects pretty easily or to see if we're recapitulating the, the desired um, fall off that we have, if there's a probability gradient for distribution of objects. And now I'm going to show you uh, some of the interaction with the parameters uh, for an HIV model that we're working on to release with the software. It's actually already available. And the interface is incredibly complicated, so I have uh, split it down with Ludovic into simple, intermediate, and advanced, and as a, a debugging mode as well, to expose different levels of complexity for different users. And right now, we're just looking at the viewing software. This is sort of the first portal of interaction, aside from the simple web viewers that I'll show you later, where you can load the model into a variety of uh, 3D environments, including professional animation software, as well as traditional molecular graphics viewers. And you can just toggle components on and off the way you would with a normal molecular graphics viewer. And you can use the built-in system of the 3D uh, environment to rotate the model, to explore the model, to zoom in and out of the model. In this case, I'm going to show you, so that was the simplest interaction. Now we switch to the next tab from the viewer tab over to the filler tab, and I'm going to expose the much more complicated debugging interface that has uh, a high number of the parameters available. Um, there are still a few parameters that we have not exposed that are uh, accessible through the Python script directly. But in this case, I'm going to be generating that fill of HIV from scratch um, using a recipe that was established. And I'm using the interface to alter the recipe in real time. And you can see in the lower left corner that it, it spent a little time to calculate a grid. It's an omniscient grid that has global information, uh, what's inside, what's outside, what's a surface. What are the probabilities for distribution about those surface? What are the distance relationships, et cetera? And then it uses uh, each one of the ingredients, the molecules, with an agent-based behavior to pack uh, relative to one another in a biologically relevant manner. And so we can generate this in uh, 17 seconds for this particular fill. And then we can easily modify any of the parameters, the density parameters, the distribution parameters, et cetera. So again, we can start with the model, and this is kind of a straw man where I, I know that I pack this one at high density, I send it out to the community, I get critiques back that there are way too many spike proteins. So we alter that, and in this case, we've got a three times reduction in the density for the spike proteins. Um, I can change the random seed for the fill, so this is the exact same fill, but just with a different random seed that I've changed from 14 to 15. And there's some recent information that comes out, uh, and the community tells, tells the system that we need to put a gradient uh, if we want a later life cycle stage for the HIV, um, that there is a polarity, in fact, to these spike proteins as they're, as they're approaching the active state. So we can recapitulate that. And again, I'll just change the random seed. So we're, we're interacting with the model and generating these in, in a matter of, in this case, 25 seconds for these models of relative complexity, relatively simple complexity. And there are a tremendous number of parameters. So we're working with a guy named Torsten Mueller um, as soon as he finishes setting up his lab in the next couple months to build these parameter space explorers where we stochastically sample this vast parameter space and then cluster the results according to uh, various weights and, and scores. And provide viewers uh, for, for the community to interact with, um, and, and then they can bur burrow down once they see a basic cluster. They can see more details and expand that cluster as a tree node. So initially, we're releasing a recipe for synaptic vesicles that comes from the 2006 cell paper from Takamori et al. And again, instead of spending months to build these one-off models, we can, we can spit out thousands of these in seconds or minutes, um, depending on the complexity and the level of detail in the packing. And we can alter all the parameters. We can cluster those results. We can perform analysis on those results. We're putting out a model for blood serum, one for generic cytoplasm. 
and uh, a model for HIV, as well as combinatorial models, HIV in blood serum. And what is exciting about this is this allows experts from different domains. So experts in blood serum or experts in spike protein interaction with blood serum can focus on one particular part of the model, while experts in the nucleocapsid domain, such as Mark Yeager's group, can focus on that. And then if we ever get anyone who's advanced in RNA packing uh, to solve some of that interior structure, the initial model will probably just release with a big three-dimensional question mark inside um, because we have zero confidence for what that structure is, but we do know what the, what the um, unstructured domains are. So I suggest that we use this. We have several levels of interaction. So you can do online viewing and exploring for education, outreach, and communication. You can dig into the software itself to do analysis. Uh, you can do modeling with the software itself. You can build recipes from scratch. You can po uh, post those to the communities. Or you can get involved with the code development to improve these modular packing algorithms that we have. And uh, people from diverse backgrounds, we're hoping, will get involved with this project to establish a very broad community of experts contributing to what is a very difficult problem we're posing here as a group. So this is one of the interaction portals um, online viewer using a game engine that allows us to get all this geometry into a, a browser, downloads in a matter of seconds, and allows us to develop really easy interaction tools. Um, so in this case, we've just got a simple viewer for HIV. And I, I, I've uh, worked with a group at Autodesk, which is the 800-pound gorilla in the 3D software world, to um, to build this uh, another bridge to a community that we have not tapped into, which are software engineers, artists, and um, coders who uh, work in the entertainment industry or the engineering industry related to this. And so I've. I'm a 3D artist myself, and I've uh, always followed this, this blog. This is sort of the most popular blog, and I thought, well, they have these contests to get people to visualize or to use a particular software to solve a problem, and they win money and prizes. Um, these are two of the typical challenges you would see. In this case, they're building texture maps onto what they call a witch doctor here and to, to host prizes for that. And I'm happy to say on Monday we're kicking off, um, sponsored by Autodesk, a challenge to visualize the uh, HIV in blood serum model. And we have a variety of sub-challenges going on with that, both to improve the model itself and, to, uh, and just artistic challenges to, to solve some of these incredibly complex visualization difficulties that we have with such vast amounts of data. So, I will stop there and hopefully you can go to autopack.org to, to find out more information. Thank you.